Okay, all praise to the Most High. Happy Feast of Tabernacles 2022. This is day three. Okay, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 10, the last verse. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, the last verse. 1021. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 21. Okay, okay, all praise. We appreciate you, Soldier Neham. All praise to the Lord. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 21. Come on. For wisdom, open the mouth of the dumb uh -huh. and make the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. So now it says, Wisdom openeth the tongue of the what? The tongue of the dumb. The tongue of the dumb. Because in captivity, we've been spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind. But the wisdom of the Lord, which is the spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is opening the mouth of the dumb in these last days. Okay? Read that again, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 21. Go ahead. For wisdom, open the mouth of the dumb uh -huh. and make the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 5, verse 21. Start off verse 20. Because the Spirit of Christ is the reason why we can open our mouth in wisdom now. You understand? If it was not the Spirit of Christ, we would still be dumb. We would not be able to speak. We would not be able to declare the things that are written in this Bible. Like to observe the Feast of Tabernacle. To understand what it's about. To gather the 12 tribes of Israel. Sons and daughters. Okay. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 20. Come on. Declare this in the house of Jacob. In the what? In the house of Jacob. In the house of Jacob. This is the house of Jacob right here. Come on. And publish it in Judah. And Say. publish it in Judah. Go ahead. Say. Hear now this, O foolish people. Because before the Spirit of Christ came upon us in these last days through the prophet Elijah. Guess what? Read that part again. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 21. Read. Hear now this, O foolish people. Because we are foolish people. We are without the laws of God. We are still trying to get our minds right. Go ahead. And without understanding. And without understanding. Because how do we get understanding? Psalms 11 and 10. Let's get that. So we understand. It says, hear now this, O foolish people. Who is that foolish people that the Lord is speaking to? The house of Jacob. Okay, come on. Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Uh -huh. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. When we do God's commandments, we will receive a good understanding. Okay, go back to where was that? Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 21. Come on. Hear now this, O foolish people. O foolish people, because we didn't know the laws of God. Okay. We're still trying to get our minds right. We're still trying to understand what the Lord is trying to tell us. Read. And without understanding. We're without, without, we are a people that are without understanding. When you look at our people, we're lost and confused. You understand? We don't know what we're supposed to do. We don't know how to return back to the Father. That's why as a nation, we are in Pentecostal. Doing Shabara Shabara. We, you understand? Talk about we've got the Holy... That's not the Holy Ghost. That's an unholy demon. Okay? Go ahead. Which have eyes and see not which have eyes and see not meaning what our eyes are white are white shut okay go ahead which have ears and hear not which have ears and hear not so the lord is saying we dumb we foolish but what's going to give us wisdom is the spirit of christ okay go back to where he was at wisdom of solomon 10 verse 21 wisdom of solomon chapter 10 verse 21 come on for wisdom open the mouth of the dumb. Wisdom open the mouth of the dumb. Okay? Because I'll give you an example. Give me the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Okay? With our forefather Zacharias. Okay? Zechariah chapter 1 verse 21. Watch this. Because guess what? The angel visited our forefather Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, that his wife will conceive a child called John. Read what you got. Luke chapter 1 verse 21. Start of verse 19. Start of verse 19. Watch this. Luke chapter 1 verse 19. Read. And the angel answered and said unto him, uh -huh. I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God. Okay, I stand in the presence of God. Read. And I am sent to speak unto thee, uh -huh. and to show thee these glad tidings. He says, I am here to deliver the good news unto you. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. Thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be dumb. Because he did not believe the things that were said unto him. Because him and our foremother Elizabeth, they were in age. You understand? So he didn't believe that we can have kids. Okay, go ahead. And not able to speak. And not able to speak. So wisdom of the Lord, guess what? Is the one that will open the mouth of the dumb. You understand? We don't believe. 
guess what? We will be dumb. The wisdom of the Lord will make sure that we are dumb. We don't know how to speak. Wait. Until the day that these things shall be performed. Until the day that these things shall be performed. Come on. Because thou believest not my words. You see that thing? Because thou believest not my words. That's why in the Christian church, our people, they are dumb. They cannot speak the word of God. Why? Because they don't believe the word of God. Wait. Which shall be fulfilled in the in their season. We shall be fulfilled in their seasons because everything is in his due season. That's what the Lord is trying to show us. That's what happened to Zacharias because why? He could he did not believe what the angel said unto him. You understand? But guess what? We believe this day. That's why we're here. The reason why we're here is because we believe what the scripture says. Go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 21. Come on. For wisdom open the mouth of the dumb. Wisdom will open the mouth of the dumb. Who's this wisdom that will open the mouth of the dumb? Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 4. Read. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Read. That seated by thy throne. You see that? That seated by thy throne. Come on. And reject me not from among thy children. I, and reject me not from among my children. Because why? When we don't keep God's laws, the Lord will reject us. Hosea 4 and 6. Hold that. Let's get that real quick. Just to show what the prophet Hosea said. Okay? Hosea 4, verse 6. Read what you got. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Come on. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, which is the laws of God. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because thou hast done what? Because thou hast rejected knowledge. When we reject knowledge, come on, what happens? I will also reject thee. You see that? I will also reject thee. That's why we went into captivity, into slavery. Because the Lord rejected us and he handed us over to the hands of our enemies. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. You see that thing? That thou shalt be no priest to me in the coming kingdom. That's what he's saying. Hold that. Exodus 19 verse 6. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Shall. Future prophecy. In the kingdom. Okay. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. Go ahead. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And ye, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So he's prophesying. This was not during the time when Moses was with us, but he's prophesying prophetically on the second coming of Christ. Read. And in holy nation. Uh, and in holy nation, read. These are the words. Which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the twelve tribes of Israel. Get that in with, uh, Revelation 1. Okay? The fulfillment of that prophecy. It has not been fulfilled yet. But we are leading up to that. Okay? Revelation 1. Verse 6. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Go ahead. And hath made us kings and priests. And hath made us kings and priests. Come on. Unto God and his father. Read. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go back to Hosea 4 and 6 now. So he's talking about the coming kingdom. Okay. So we are leading up to that. That's what's going on right now. Okay. That's why you see brothers are here to learn about who they are. Okay. Read what you got. Hosea 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh-huh. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Come on. I will also reject thee. You see what he's saying? Because we rejected the laws of God. The Lord says, I will also reject thee. He handed us over to the hands of our enemies scattered among four corners of the earth. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. That thou shalt be no priest to me, meaning what? You will not be in the coming kingdom. That's what he's saying. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. You see that? Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, that's the knowledge that we, had, we went into captivity because we didn't have none. Read. I will also forget thy children. He says, I will also forget thy children. We the children. But the Lord remembered us in these last days. You understand? The Lord had mercy upon us. That's why we remember now who we are. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 4 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 4. Read. Give me wisdom that's seated by thy throne. Uh -huh. And reject me not from among thy children. And reject me not from among my children, but thy children. That's what we read in Hosea. Read. For I, thy servant, and son of thine handmaid, uh -huh. am a feeble person. I'm a feeble person because why? We weak. You understand? We are in our mortal bodies. We are not immortal. Our bodies are destructible. They are corruptible. Read. And 
of a short time. And of a short time, our lifespan is short. Okay, go ahead. And too young for the understanding of judgment. And, and, and too young for the understanding of what? For the understanding of judgment and law. That part right there. This is King Solomon speaking. He's saying he was too young for the understanding of what judgment and laws. The wisest man. So it amazes me when you walk into the, in the truth, you believe you don't need you don't need to be told nothing. You don't need to be guided. You simple as that. Because King Solomon, the wisest man, this is what he said. Read the part again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Right. For I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person, and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. So guess what? When you in the spirit of Christ, this is the, this is the spirit you're going to move in. You're going to move in the spirit of what? I'm a child. I don't understand what this Bible is saying. But when you come in, because you Negroes be window shopping, you know who you are? Guess what? You're not going to move in this spirit right here. You're going to move in the spirit of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And the Lord will put you to damn death. Understand that? Wisdom of Solomon 10, 21. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 21. Read. For wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb. Wisdom will open the mouth of the dumb. Come on. And make the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. He is going to make the tongue of them that cannot speak the word of God eloquent. You understand? So meaning what? The most High God will be what? He is going to be the spirit of truth in our mouth. That's what the Lord will do. Jeremiah 5, 14. Watch what he said to Jeremiah here. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Great. You know what? Read verse 13. We're going to read down. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 13. Come on. And the prophets shall become wind. The prophets shall become wind. And the word is not in them. That's what's happening in the Christian church. You understand? They just blow in wind. They don't mean, they don't, they don't know what they're saying. When what they're saying don't mean nothing. It don't make no sense. Read. Thus shall it be done unto them. Uh-huh. Well, watch this now. Wherefore. That said the Lord God of hosts. That said the Lord God of hosts. Read. Because we speak this word. Because we speak the word of God. We must speak the word of God. Go ahead. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. He says, I will make my words, not our words, the Lord's word. The word of God. That's what will be in our mouth. Okay, go ahead. And these people would. And these people would. Meaning what? Those that don't keep God's laws, when the scriptures come out, guess what? They're going to be devoured by the fire of the laws of God. Read. And it shall devour them. It shall devour them. Didn't say burn, devour. It will consume, it will destroy you. It's supposed to be for your good, but it will be for your what? For your destruction. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. She prospered their works in the hand of the holy prophet. Uh huh. You see that the she is wisdom. The she here is wisdom. Okay. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 1. Read. She prospered their works in the hand of the holy prophet. Uh huh. They went through the wilderness. Actually, you know what? Read this one again. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. She prospered their works in the hand of the holy prophet. So now she prospered, meaning wisdom prospered. The works in the hand of the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet here is who? Moses. That's what he's talking about here. Moses was a prophet. Okay? And the Lord was with him. Watch this. The she is wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 9. Watch this. Because wisdom is, she's got a what? The reason why it's called a she is because she's got feminine characteristics. Okay? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 9. Like rather why... That she have is she referred as a she. Watch this. Verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 9. Uh-huh. Therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me. He says, I purpose to take wisdom to me to live with me. Go ahead. Knowing that she would be a counselor of good tidings. You see that that she would be a counselor of what? Of good things. Of good things. So what we're reading here is King Solomon is saying he purposed to take wisdom to dwell with him. Like a spouse. Okay, go ahead. And a comfort in cares and griefs. And comfort in cares and griefs. A pillar of rest. You understand? Jump up to verse 2. Watch, watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 2. Uh -huh. I loved her. I loved her. The hair is wisdom. Read. And sought her out from my youth. And I sought her out from my youth. Because in your youth, that's what you're supposed to be seeking. The wisdom of the Lord. 
to purpose wisdom to take to take him to take wisdom unto you like a spouse you understand before you get an actual spouse guess what wisdom must be your spouse so if you're not married guess what wisdom is your spouse understand that this goes for both men and women okay great i desire to make her my spouse you see that i desire to make her my spouse right and i was a lover of a people because the wisdom of the lord is beautiful understand that and it it the most that god has put the spirit on the prophets to do what to order the 12 tribes of israel according to what is written in this book you understand so when you find yourself hating law and order the spirit of the lord is not with you understand that you hate correction you hate being told what to do you don't like counsel you don't like to seek counsel the wisdom of the lord satan is working with you because satan is the spirit of resistance understand that get that in zechariah 3 okay watch this zechariah 3 and 1 Zechariah 3 verse 1. Go ahead. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Read. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. You see that thing? So now, Joshua the high priest is standing before the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord brings forth good tidings, like we read in Luke 1, with our forefathers, Zacharias. So as the angel is delivering good news, you understand, ministering unto Joshua the high priest. What was Satan doing? And Satan doing what? And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. You see that thing? So when you're supposed to receive the word of God, there will always be the spirit of resistance from Satan. Understand that? That can be within the congregation and without. That without is obvious. But within the congregation, guess what? Not everybody here is here to hear the word of God. Not everybody here is here to build. I'm going to tell you straight up. There are some who are here not here to build, but they are here to destroy from within you shall fail. Read verse 1 again. Come on. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Satan is always the spirit of resistance. Not wanting to what? Not wanting men and women to learn this book. To grow in the spirit. So the Lord bless you with understanding and wisdom and knowledge. You understand? So as long as you move like a child, like Christ said, get that in... Um, Matthew 18. Because this is what Christ said. You understand? You see, Christ was, he's a master teacher. But the way he, done, he dealt with things, watch how he dealt with things. You understand? Watch this. Matthew 18 and 1. Matthew chapter 18 verse 1. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Watch this. Go ahead. And Jesus called a little child what, unto him. What did Christ did? And Jesus called a little child unto him. Christ called a little child unto him. Why a little child? Because children are moldable. It's easy to raise a child than to what? Than to repair a broken man or woman. It's easy to raise a child and groom them than to repair a broken man or woman. Read the verse again. Matthew chapter 18 verse 2. Verse 1 again. Matthew chapter 18 verse 1. Read. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Read. And Jesus called the little child unto because, him. Because Christ could have just easily just answered the question. You understand? He could have easily just did that. It says X, Y, and Z. You know why he did that? Hold this. Give me Matthew 24. No, no. Matthew chapter 23 verse... No, Matthew 21, verse 23. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. This is when Christ was teaching, right? Read. Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. Come on. And when he was coming to the temple, uh -huh. the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. As he was teaching. So the chief priests walked in as he was teaching. Go ahead. And said, by what authority? Whoa, whoa, stop right there. By what? By what authority? You see the first thing they are asking? They are not listening to what the Son of God is teaching. The first thing they are doing is to question his authority. You understand? That's why I'm saying it amazes me. When you walk in, you didn't know nothing what this Bible is saying. I don't care if you are window shopping on YouTube, but when you came into the truth, the Lord said, okay, go over there and learn something. But when you arrive, you think you're somewhere. How many times do I have to address this thing? 
it never gets done. Why? Because some of you, you are not here to build. I'm going to tell you straight. So you better sit down and examine yourself. I told you, after the day of atonement, Satan is coming in full swing. He's not going to play. He will rip you apart. He will rip your hair off. Some of you don't believe it, by the way. You understand? Read again. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 23. Read. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? You see that thing? I'm going to show you this. The people that was doing this, they did not believe on Christ. Those people back then, they are back today. Whenever you hear when a brother, it doesn't have to be me giving the instruction. It can be one of the brothers, one of the soldiers giving himself, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. The minute you, instead of saying, let me do it, you question the authority first. Guess what? You second guessing the brother. That's not the spirit of Christ. But when Christ was teaching, this, the man, the, the, these men right here, this is the spirit that was moving in. They were not moving in the spirit of Christ. They were moving in the spirit of Satan. Because who was over the scribes and Pharisees? Rome. Wrong. John 8. Come on. John 8 verse 44. I'm going to show you that. So you have to ask yourself, which Lord do you fall in now that you beg? Which Lord do you fall in now that you beg in the regeneration? Read what you got. John 8 verse 44. Come on. John chapter 8 verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father, the devil. That right there. Who was Christ talking to? The scribes and Pharisees. Who was their father, the devil? Wrong. The white man. Because the spirit of the white man is the spirit to supplant. And not the supplant in terms of what we read about our forefather Jacob. No. It's the spirit to undermine, to think I'm smarter than you. That's the spirit of the white man. That's how he moves. He, we see it in the, at the jobs. They always think they are, they are better than us. They always think they're smarter than us. They always think they can do it better than you can. Guess what? I see the same spirit in Israel as well. That's not the spirit of Christ. That's the spirit of Satan. And Christ had to address this thing. Go back to where he was at. Matthew 21. Watch this. Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. Read. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and mm. said, uh -huh. By what authority doest thou these things? You see that thing? They were not interested in what the Son of God had to say. Go ahead. And who gave thee this authority? You see, he, listen, he's in the middle of, he's teaching. He's building the people's spirits up. So what's happening? That's the, I mean, with all that butter, the only thing they were interested in was this. That's all they cared about. They didn't care about, we need to build our nation up. No, they didn't care about that. They only cared about this right here. You understand? Who is you? Who are you going to tell me what to do? You understand? That's the spirit of Satan, brothers. That's not the spirit of Christ. The minute you find yourself, because you can do it, you can do it. I can say, Soldier Samuel, do one, two, three. You are doing it, but in the spirit, you mad as hell. Satan. Satan. He's the one that's guiding you, not the most high. Yes, you're going to do it. Guess what? At that point, the Lord is using you, but not in the way you think. The Lord is using you for using you for his purpose. Then when he's done, he says, goodbye. Some of you don't think about it like that. Because you're going to say, but I'm doing it. Yeah, but you're working for the Lord, but you belong to Satan. No. Because eventually, you're going to be handed over to him. It's not if or maybe, it's a fact. You understand? Because you can make it look good in front of us and say, yes, sir, and all that. But in the spirit, you hate the brother giving the instruction. Who is he going to tell me what to do? You don't realize that you're the one that is blocking your own salvation. Because you're not going to survive the wilderness test. You will fail it. You don't want to be a crash test dummy. A crash test dummy. You don't want to be that. You ever seen when they assemble cars, they're testing them, they'll be putting a crash test dummy in there, and the dummy will be ripped, their head will be off, they put a new one in. You don't want that. Because I know for some of you, it's one ear out the other. After this class, back to nigger mode. I can tell you right now. Go back to Matthew 21. Watch this. Read the thing again. I'm going to show you how Christ dealt with this. Read. Matthew chapter 21 verse 23. Read. And when he was coming to the temple, uh -huh. the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? Uh -huh. And who gave thee this authority? So watch this. Go ahead. 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Watch what this is how he answers the question. Watch this. I also will ask you one thing. You notice he didn't answer the question. He didn't answer the question. He asked another question instead. Why? They were not worthy to receive the answers. He says, you're going to die in your sin. You're not going to learn nothing. Right? Which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. You see how he answered? You see how he dealt with the people? Instead of giving them the answer, he cross-questioning them. Now, because what is he doing? He's testing the spirit. Are you worthy to receive this glorious gospel or not? Or you're going to sit there and say, uh -huh, by what authority? You notice he didn't give them no answer. They still don't have the answer. They still don't have the answer. They're still blind unto this day. You men understand this? Okay, now watch this. Hmm. Go back to Matthew 18, verse 1. Verse 2 again. Matthew chapter 18, verse 2. Read. And Jesus called a little child unto him uh -huh. and set him in the midst of them. He set him in the midst of the disciples now. Go ahead. And said, Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. except ye be converted. Except ye be changed. Because it's easy to raise a child. It's easy to guide them. To say, listen, this is blue. Yes, daddy. Yes, father. Yes, mother. This is blue. The child is not going to say, yeah, but, you know, it's a different shade of blue. It's light blue. The child is not going to say that. Okay, go ahead. Verily, I say unto you, right? except you be converted mm -hmm. and become as little children. Except you be converted and become as little children, like the child that was standing in the midst of them. Right? Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because you read that and think, okay, except I be a little child, I will not, you, you see the part that you don't put a lot of emphasis on is the last part of that verse. Read that last part of that verse. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not be in the kingdom. That's what Christ, Christ is saying. You will not be in the kingdom of heaven on earth. You're not going to live forever. That's what he's saying. Meaning you will not be picked up when the chariots come. Or you'll be picked up and go to the wilderness because you are a crash test dummy. You make that decision. You see that last part right there? Yeah. It sounds like a punchline, right? Because Christ keeps saying it over and over. And the prophets that came after him, they also said the same thing. Over and over and over again. You will not, the apostle Paul, we, he went over this with the church of Corinth. The church of Ephesus explaining the same thing over and over and over again. Guess what? They still didn't get it. Christ became kind and said, okay, I'm going to use a carnal example. The little child. The apostle Paul said the same thing. He said, I cannot talk to you about spiritual things because you are still carnal. That's what he said. But guess what? One year at the other year drop. Now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to get to the class in a minute. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Chapter 8, 9, verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Right. For I, thy servant, and son of thine handmaid, uh -huh. am a feeble person. Am a feeble person. Go ahead. And of a short time, uh -huh. and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. Because if you are in that mindset, you're going to be the like little child that Christ was talking about. In front of the disciple, The disciples. That was what was going on. And King Solomon understood that. Right. For though a man be never be, be never so perfect uh -huh. among the children of men, right. yet if thy wisdom be not with him, uh -huh. he shall be nothing regarded. You are, going, you are born to be put to death. You are born to be a waste of time and life. A waste of molecules. That's what the Read the Bible again, verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 6. Right. For though a man never so perfect among the children of men. He says, for, because though a man be never so perfect among the children of men. He's going to tell, he says, I cannot be perfect among the children of men. You understand? The only way for him to be perfect is the wisdom of the Lord must be with him. If he's not within that man or woman, guess what? He shall be nothing regarded. Wait. 
Yet, if the wisdom be not with him, if the spirit of Christ be not with that man, what's going to happen? He shall be nothing regarded. He shall be nothing regarded. That's what he's saying. Now watch this. Let's go to Sirach, Ecclesiastes 44. Sirach 44 and verse, verse 9. Watch this. It is just against chapter 44, verse 9. Go ahead. And some there be which have no memorial. You're not going to have a memorial. Nobody will remember you. He says, He shall be nothing regarded. Read. Who are perished. Who are perished, meaning they did. Read. As though they had never been. They have never been born. Go ahead. And have become as though they had never been born. And they become as though they have never been born on this earth. Read. And they are children. And their children after them. You don't want to fall within this lot. Because this is Riwari Hezi. This is not the kingdom of heaven. But this is a gateway to get there. Why? Because now we are in the congregation. We are learning how to get our minds right. You understand? It's a way to get there. And the Lord has created a way for us to get there. Brothers and sisters. So guess what? Don't misuse your grace period. Exploit it. You understand? Use it for good. Use your grace period the right way. Don't misuse it. Listen, everybody has a grace period, by the way. Let's read that in Ephesians 4. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 and verse... Hmm. Yep, verse 7. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. Go ahead. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You see that thing? According to the measure. There's a limit to it. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. So, you don't know when your grace period is expiring. So, don't misuse it. Why should the same thing be brought up over and over? You're misusing your grace period. You're not taking advantage of it. You understand? Read the verse again. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. Read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You see that thing? According to the measure of the gift of Christ. So don't be thinking, you read in the scripture says, says, yeah, but King David, no, you're not King David. You understand? No, no, they never do that. You're not King David. King David, he says, he was a man after the Lord's heart. Yeah, King David messed up, but he recovered himself. Guess what? So you want to compare yourself to King David? You simple as hell. The same love that the Lord had for King David, he might not have the same love for you. So don't misuse your grace, period. You understand? Now, Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 verse 1. Read. She prospered their works in the hand of the Holy Prophet. You see that? She prospered their works in the hand of the Holy Prophet. That's our forefather Moses. You understand? Moses, the Lord prospered him. Okay? Because he was a faithful, he was, a, he was faithful to the Lord. He was. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Baruch now. Okay, let me segue into that last now. Watch this. Baruch 4 and 1. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Watch this, come on. This is the book of the commandments of God. Read. And the law that endureth forever. This is the book of the commandments of God. The Bible is a book of commandments. The Bible is not true love magazine. The Bible is not destiny magazine. Yeah, something glow, right? No, no, no. This is the book of the commandments. The Bible is a book of laws and commandments. It's not a book of nice stories. This is not the trilogy of Harry Potter. No. Read the Bible again. Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. This is the book of the commandments of God. Go ahead. And the law that endures forever. And the law that endures forever. So the Bible is a book of law and commandments. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. They that obey what is written, the laws and the commandments, they will, they're going to come to life. Read. But such as leave it shall die. But such as reject it, they not, will not be in the coming kingdom. You understand? Now watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 7, 59. 
All they that keep it shall come to life. You keep God's commandments, you're going to come to life. Watch this. Wait. 7 verse 59. Second Ezra's chapter 7 verse 59. Go ahead. For this is the life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived. You see that this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived. While he was with us in the wilderness. Go ahead. Say, choose thee life that thou mayest live. Choose life that you may live. Go ahead. Nevertheless. That's it. That's it on that. I just want that now for now. Deuteronomy 8 verse 19. This is the life, you understand, whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived. What was the life? Deuteronomy 30. It's the laws of commandments. It laws and commandments that Baruch is mentioning. Now let's get some more on that. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Go ahead. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Ray. That I have set before you life and death. He said before us life when we keep the commandments death when we reject them. Read. Blessing and cursing. Blessings when we keep the commandments. Cursings when we reject them. Read. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, do what? Therefore, choose life. Choose life. He's telling you what you must choose though. Choose life. Go ahead. That both thou and thy seed may live. That both you and your children may live. Go ahead. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And that thou mayest obey his voice. You may love the Lord your God, obey his voice. What is that? You are choosing life. You love the Lord your God, you're choosing life. You, you obey his voice, you're choosing life. Come on. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. You cleave unto Lord, you're choosing life. Right? For he is thy life. He, because he is your life. He's letting you know where your life come from. The Lord. He's the one. Our job is what? is to prove to the Lord that we deserve the eternal life he's going to give us. Why should he let us live? Why should he let us live? Our job is to prove to him that we what? we worthy for the eternal life that he has for us. So we must prove now that we what? We are worthy of it. Okay, go ahead. And the length of their days. And the length of their days, eternal life. Read. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy father. That's the land of Jerusalem. Go ahead. To Abraham. Uh -huh. To Isaac. Come on. And to Jacob. To give them. To give them. Now, give me Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 9 now. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 9. Read. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, uh -huh. which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. So Moses wrote this law. That's the life that we read in 2nd Ezra 7 59. That's the life. Read. And Moses commanded them, saying, Moses commanded them. He, what did he command? The law unto them. Read. At the end of every seven years, mm -hmm. in the solemnity of the year of release, in the solemnity of the year of release, go ahead. In the Feast of Tabernacles. In the what now? In the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, go ahead. Which is where, which is what we're celebrating now. In the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is a law. That's what we just read in verse 9, by the way. He wrote the law. He delivered it to the priests. Okay, read. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, uh -huh. in the place which he shall choose. Because three times a year, Deuteronomy 16, 16, Three times a year, we were required to appear before the Lord. You understand? Let's get there. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Read. Right. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. Ah. Uh -huh. In the place which he shall choose. Read. Right. In the feast of unleavened bread. In the feast of unleavened bread, that's the feast of the Passover. Go ahead. And in the feast of weeks. The feast of weeks, that's the day of Pentecost. You understand? Read. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles, which is where, what we are celebrating now. Go ahead. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. They shall not appear before the Lord empty because we are to bring sacrifices. You understand? And bring free will offerings according to how the Lord hath blessed us. Next verse. Go ahead. Every man shall give as is he is able. Read. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he had given thee. You see that thing? So now, go back. 31. 
Verse 11. Chapter 31, verse 9. No, no, 31, verse 11 again. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 11. Read. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, uh -huh. in the place which he shall choose, read. thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Uh -huh. In their what? In their hearing. In their hearing. So guess what? This is all Israel. Now in your ears, we are rehearsing, we are what? We are teaching the laws of God to you. Go ahead. Gather the people together. That's why we are gathered right now. Because it's a commandment. Go ahead. Men and women. Read. And children. Come on. And thy stranger that is within thy gates. Read. Meaning the brother that lost his land, now he's living in somebody else's land, who is also his brother from another tribe. Go ahead. That they may hear and that they may learn. That they may hear and learn. So guess what? Before you learn, you must listen. That means before you know, you first learn. So that you may hear and learn. Listen first, speak less. Or not at all, for some brothers. Go ahead. And fear the Lord your God. And fear the Lord your God. Read. And observe to do all the words of this law. And observe to do all the words of this law. Watch this now. He says, gather the people together, men, women, and children. That's why everybody's here now. Go ahead. And that they are children which have not known anything. Because children don't know anything. They need to be taught according to the verse we just read. Verse 11. Go ahead. No, no, verse 12. Read. May hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. You see that thing? So children must learn. You, you see, they may hear and learn. So children, they listen more and say nothing. Go ahead. As long as you live in the land whither, the, whither you go over Jordan to possess it. You see that? So the reason why we are able to be in the land is because we obeyed the laws of God. Now we are in the lands of our captivity. We have been kicked out. What did we do? We did not obey the laws of God. That's why now we are in slavery. We suffered apartheid, colonization, forced migration, racism, poverty, broken family structures, Baby mamas and baby daddies, single parent households, abortion, teenage pregnancy, diseases, STDs. That's where we are now. Why? Because we did not obey the voice of the Lord our God. Now we're coming back. And as we're coming back, it's best to be quiet, listen, and learn. Why? Because this is not about you. It's about the 12 tribes of Israel. You are here because the Lord is so fit to say, okay, there's something in that brother. But when you arrive here, you go into nigger mode. You forgot what the Lord called you here. That's evil as hell. That means you've forgotten the mission. You've forgotten the fight. You understand? Remember how you first came in. Always with the willingness to learn. But guess what? Satan jumps on you. Now you think you know too much now. You see the point? You can win the shop wherever the hell you want. But me, I'm going to see it. But I'm going to see your behavior is going to negatively affect what we're trying to build. No problem. Go set up camp somewhere. Nobody's going to say nothing. But in here, I want to see the children grow to become wives and mothers in Israel. I want to see brothers grow up from being boys to being men to being leaders of the nation. Me, that's why I'm here. If you are here for something else, do us both a favor and just leave. I said it. I'm not playing. Just leave. So we can, so the Lord can replace, bring 10 more people in your place. And guess what? The Lord forces us into a greater army. You understand? You men understand this? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Now, watch this. Give me, go back, go back to um, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Read verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 10. Go ahead. And Moses commanded them, saying, uh -huh. At the end of every seven years, Read. in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles, which is what we're celebrating right now. Leviticus 23 verse 1. Remember, this is, these are laws and commandments. Yes, we're celebrating, we're having fun. All praises to the Lord. We are, listen, we don't think about Esau right now. Okay? I don't think about my laptop. I don't even know where it is. Why? But I know where the precepts are, I know where the Bible, I know where the, my nation is. I'm looking at them right now. You understand? To hell with that laptop. The hell is this? Now, Deuteronomy 20, Leviticus 23 and 1, read that for me. 
Leviticus chapter 23 verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say, Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. This is concerning the feasts of the Lord, what we are about to read. Go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. This, this is a holy convocation. You notice it didn't say convocation only. It says holy convocation. That means when we convocate, we must be in the spirit. You understand? We're not lively. Doing all kinds of stuff. You understand? When music playing, sisters take off their high heels and jump on tables. No, no, no. That's not what he's talking about here. Read that again. Verse 2. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, Read. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Holy convocation. In the spirit of Christ we have fun. Read. Even these are my feasts. Even these are my celebrations. Okay. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 33. Let's read about that feast. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. Go ahead. It shall be unto you. No, no, no. 23, verse 33. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Read. The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. For seven days unto the Lord. Is it the most that is merciful? The Lord is so merciful, he says, all the evils that you've done, I want you to rehearse the righteous acts. Have fun while doing it. So he's giving us a chance to just unwind a little bit, hmm? to recharge. And he's saying, don't be in the city. Go to the wilderness. Set up tents and booths like you are seeing here at the back of us. Sleep in tents. Hmm? This is the mercy of the Lord right here. Go ahead. The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Go ahead. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. On the first day it shall be a holy convocation. That's why we gather ourselves together on the first day. Go ahead. Ye shall do no several work therein. Because it's a what? It's a Sabbath. We don't do no several work. It's a Sabbath also. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So it says, seven days we shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. What verse you at? 36, sir. Go ahead. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. Uh -huh. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no several work therein. It says, on the eighth day it shall be what? It shall be a holy convocation unto the Lord. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, uh -huh. to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. We don't do these things no more. We don't offer offerings made by fire unto the Lord anymore, because we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice now. Now we are under Christ. Go ahead. A burnt offering uh -huh. and a meat offering, Read. a sacrifice and drink offerings. Everything upon his day. Everything upon his day. So we don't do that anymore. Give me that in Hebrews 10, verse 8 through 10. Because we no longer do that anymore. Okay? Christ was, when he says an offering, offering made by fire unto the Lord, that's what Christ did. We no longer have to do that. Have to do that anymore. But we do keep the feast though. Okay? Read. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8. Go ahead. Above when he said, mm -hmm. Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Don't do the offerings anymore, the sacrifices anymore. Go ahead. Neither has pleasure therein, uh -huh. which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law. Which law? Read verse 1. Because he's saying it right here, but Israel is slow. Let's read verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. For the law having a share of good things to come. The law had a share, was a share of good things to come. Read. And not the very image of the things. Go ahead. Can never with those sacrifices. Can never with those what? Can never with those sacrifices. With those sacrifices, the meat offerings, the burnt offerings, the sin offerings, okay, the drink offerings. We don't do that anymore. Go ahead. Which they offered year by year continually. We offered year by year continually on the day of atonement, which we just come from. Read. Make the commas there unto perfect. He could not make us perfect, but guess what? It was the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Now read verse 9. 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9. Go ahead. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He taketh away the first. The first covenant of animal sacrifice under Moses. Read. That he may establish the second. That he may establish the new covenant under Christ. Read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You see that thing? So Christ is that offering that was what? Is the sacrifice that was offered. So we no longer have to do that. We don't make an offering, you understand, any more like that. Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. Now we keep, we still keep the feast though. You understand? Under Christ. We keep that, get that in Romans 8. Real quick. We keep the righteousness of the law without the law of animal sacrifice. Okay? Um, okay, I mean Acts. Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans, no, no, Romans 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, uh -huh. there shall no flesh be justified. The, by the deeds of the, what was the deeds? The works of the law of animal sacrifice. That's the deeds. You understand? The carnal ordinances. Okay, go ahead. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law of animal sacrifice is the knowledge of sin because it what? It reminded us that we were in the midst of sin and it did not make us perfect. Right? But now, the righteousness of God Then now, the righteousness of God come on. Without the law is manifest. You see that? The righteousness of God without the law. What was that righteousness of God? He's talking about Christ. Keeping the commandments of God under Christ now. Okay? Without the law of animal sacrifice because he did away with that. Like we read in Hebrews 10. Read. Being witnessed by the law because the it's written by in the law and in the prophets because Moses prophesied about that the prophets prophesied about that Isaiah as an example okay now go back to Leviticus 23 Leviticus chapter 23 verse 37 read these are the feasts of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord read a burnt offering, and a meat offering, uh -huh. a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. You see that? So we don't do that. Christ became that sacrifice for us. But we do keep the laws of God. We still keep the commandments. Why? Because the Feast of Tabernacle is a commandment. So we must still keep it. The temple laws and the ordinal, the carnal sacrifices, ordinances and the sacrifice, we don't do that anymore. The temple laws, they are no longer applicable. Because the temple was destroyed. That's why when his sister is on a menstrual, she still comes to the congregation. You understand? We don't have that small room in your day anymore. We don't have that. You understand? Because I know in the Zion Christian Church, they have a thing you say, no, uh, she cannot cook for me because she's on a period. But she touches everything in the house. You see that? Why? Because they don't understand. They are lost. They need their eyes to be enlightened. Okay? That's why we're here, back on the earth. Go ahead. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, uh -huh. and beside your gifts. Because guess what? On the Feast of Tabernacles is also what? Gift, gift, gift giving. You understand? It is a time of gift giving as well. Read. And beside all your vows, uh -huh. and beside all your free will offerings, uh -huh. which ye give unto the Lord. Read. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month. The same is still going over the Feast of Tabernacles because what? We slow. Read. When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall okay, keep so, the so now, right there, pay attention here. Read verse 39 one more again. Leviticus 23 verse 39. Go ahead. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land. When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land. This goes into what? The Feast of Ingathering. The day of Pentecost is talking about it right here. Go ahead. Ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Because after the feast of ingathering, what do we celebrate? Pentecost. Go ahead. I mean tabernacles. Read. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. Uh -huh. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So he's still going into what? The feast of tabernacle. Because the feast of tabernacle come after the feast of ingathering. The feast of weeks. The, the day of Pentecost. Go ahead. And ye shall take you on the first day, 
the boughs of goodly trees. The, he says, on the first day, that's why we set up those booths on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacle. That's what we did. Go ahead. Branches of palm trees. Uh -huh. And the boughs of thick trees. Right. And willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So we shall rejoice in the tents seven days. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. Right. It shall be a statute forever in your generation. You see what he's saying? It shall be a statute forever in your generation. Even after Christ died, they still kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Guess what? Before the Lord returns, we must still keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In the kingdom, we will keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? Read on. He shall celebrate it in the seventh month. He shall celebrate it in the seventh month, which is September. The seventh month of the year. Okay, go ahead. He shall dwell in booths. He shall dwell in booths, like you see here at the back of us. Read. Seven days. Uh-huh. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Read. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. That your generation may know. Read verse 43 again. I'm going to show you something with that verse. Read verse 43 again. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 43. Go ahead. That your generations may know uh -huh. that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. He says, I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. Go ahead. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Hold that. You told me 28. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring thee. No, no. Exodus 20. Now get to 25. Verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6. Go ahead. I am the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Which brought you Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Come on. From the house of bondage. From the house of slavery. So when the Lord delivered us from the house of slavery, he made us to dwell in boats. To remember the glorious things that he did for us when we were delivered from the hand of Pharaoh. So unto this day, we must still remember the things that the Lord did for us. So our brothers and sisters in the Christian church lost, worshipping a white Jesus, talk about their Pentecostal. Pentecostal is not a religion. Pentecostal, guess what? There's a feast of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost. Okay? Then the Bible, there's no Mazalwan in the Bible. There's no ZCC in the Bible. There's no uh, Jehovah's Witnesses in the Bible. There's no seven-day disadvantage in the Bible. Is the 12 tribes of Israel. So all Israel must observe this law wherever we scattered. Because why? The Most High God commanded us because of what he did for us. You understand? So when you hear our people hear this truth, they reject it. Even, you, even when you show them, Christ is a black man. We are the Israelites. You forgot who we are. They still go back to the Christian church. They are ungrateful. They hate the Lord. And they hate the Most High God. And they hate their people as well. And their children. Understand that? They are not nation-minded. They are individual lights. Okay? So guess what? Until they, they repent, they are enemies to us. Until they repent, they are enemies to us. Understand that? Now, go back to Leviticus 23, verse 43 again. Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 43. Right. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. Right. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, come on. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Not any other gods. He does what he said. I am the Lord your God. Meaning what? Don't worship no other gods. Because when you worship other gods, like white Jesus, you're not going to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why it says, I'm the Lord your God. Read. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. Moses declared the children of, unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. All praises to the Most High. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 13. We read this, the 16th verse, but we're going to start a little higher. Deuteronomy 16, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 13. Read. 
Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles. You shall observe what? Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Come on. Seven days. Seven days. Read. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. After that, you have gathered in your corn and your wine. What is he talking about? The day of Pentecost. The Feast of Ingathering of our crops. Read. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Uh -huh. Thou and thy son and thy daughter. That's what we have here. The children are here. They are not learning about them Christmas. They are not learning about them demonic birthdays. They are not learning about um, New Year's Eve. No. They are learning about the Feast of Tabernacles this day. A seven day celebration. Go ahead. And thy man servant. And thy maid servant. Read. And the Levite. The stranger. And the fatherless. Uh. And the widow that are within thy gates. You see that thing? So we, take, we took care of everybody. The fatherless. The widows. The strangers, the strangers is, get that in Leviticus so we understand who the strangers are. He's not talking about an Arab. No, that's not a stranger. That is a real stranger. The stranger that he's talking about here, let's get the precept. Leviticus 23, verse 35. No, Leviticus 25, verse 35. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. Go ahead. And if thy brother be works and poor. Uh, if your brother, your brother, your brother, the children of thy people, read. And fallen into decay with thee. He fallen into decay, meaning he works in poor. Things go hard, as they always do. Go ahead. Then thou shalt relieve him. Meaning help your brother. You shall relieve your brother. Go ahead. Yea, though he be a stranger. Though your brother be a stranger. Go ahead. Or a soldier. Read. That he may live with thee. That he may live with you. Read. Take thou no assury of him. No, no, take, not, take thou no usury of him. I mean, don't misuse your brother. Go ahead. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God uh -huh. that thy brother may live with that you. That your brother may live with you. So he's go, while he's living with you, he's going to be working with you. You must pay your brother. That's what he's saying. Read. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury. Uh -huh. Nor lend him thy virus for increase. You see that? So he said, listen, thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury. You help your brother, he's down and out. You say, no, when you pay me back, I want interest. That's evil as hell. You understand? That is evil. Now, go back. You told me 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 14. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son uh -huh. and thy daughter, Read. and thy man servant, and thy maid servant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. Read that part again, I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 14. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, Read. and thy man servant, and thy maid servant. And the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, uh -huh. and the widow that are within thy gates. And the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Read. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In the place which the Lord shall choose. In the place which the Lord shall choose. But remember, we are no longer in Jerusalem. We are no longer in our homeland anymore. We are in captivity. So guess what? In the lands of our captivity... We shall rehearse the righteous act. Hold this. Judges 5 verse 11. Because somebody might have a clever thought. They say, oh wait. But you're not in Jerusalem no more. You could only observe this in Jerusalem. Read that. Judges 5 verse 11. Judges chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of Archer. They that are delivered from the noise of Archer. And Archer doesn't make noise. So obviously this took about an ICBM missile. During, during this time of judges, that, that, that type of technology did not exist. But the, this technology exists in our time now, in these last days. Nations building nuclear bombs and weapons to bomb each other to kingdom come. Because the kingdom is coming. Yes, they are going to bomb each other for the kingdom to come. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of arches right? in the places of throwing water. Uh -huh. There. there, in the lands of our captivity, in the places of drawing water, because right now we're what? We draw waters now, meaning what? We are, we are playing fetch for the other nation. 
You understand? Read. They shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. They shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what we're doing right now. We're, we are in the land of drawing water. You understand? In the lands of our captivity. God, the most said, God says, we must rehearse the righteous acts. Keep God's commandments. Observe the high holy days. Okay? Now, go back. Deuteronomy, chapter 16. Verse 15 again. Verse 15. Right. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In the place which the Lord shall choose. In the place which the Lord shall choose. Go ahead. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase. Uh -huh. The Lord will bless you in all your increase. Go ahead. And in all the works of thy hands. Right. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. So, guess what? This feast day, we must rejoice. As all the other feasts, we must rejoice. Don't want to see nobody with a, with a long face. You understand? No. You must rejoice before the Lord your God. Because you used to rejoice when you went to Jesus. The hell is this? Yeah. You used to rejoice when you went to um, Busy Corner. Yeah. Go Busy Corner, you could not wait to pray. Today, you observe the feast day of the Lord. In righteousness, our holy convocation. Okay. Now, give me... No, read verse 16 now, because we read it earlier on. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. Shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. Go ahead. In the place which he shall choose. In the place which he shall choose. Remember, that's Jerusalem. But we're not in Jerusalem anymore. We are in the lands of our captivity. Okay, go ahead. In the feast of unleavened bread. In the feast of unleavened bread, that's the feast of the Passover. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Weeks. That's the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Ingathering. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles, which is what we're doing right now. Tabernacling. Go ahead. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. You see that thing? We shall not appear before the Lord, our God, empty. So, because, guess what? We are to bring the sacrifices, right? Give me Salah 35 and 1. Watch this. So, today, it says, we must not appear before the Lord, our God, empty. Psalm 35 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 35 is 1. Go ahead. He that keepeth the law, uh -huh. bringeth offerings enough. Is, is, is he that keeps the laws of God, we bring offer. These are Those are enough offerings when we keep God's commandments. Read. He that taketh heed to the commandments. The, so guess what? He that takes heed to the commandments, which is the law, which is our, which our what? These are our righteous, these are sacrifices of righteousness now. Go ahead. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. We are offering a peace offering because why? We want to have peace between us and the Lord. Because we were enemies of God. Okay, go ahead. He that requited a good turn offereth the fine flower. He says that he that required requited a good turn. Because why? We coming back to the Lord now. You understand? What are the good turns? Get that in Romans 7 verse 12. Let's see what are these good turns that we require. The good turns that we are requiring. Required. Okay? Mm. English. Read what you got. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is holy. Come on. And the commandment holy. The commandments of God, they are holy. Read. And just and good. They are just and they are good. Okay. Now, give me that in Psalms chapter 4. The offerings that we are bringing now is the offerings of righteousness. Okay. Watch this. Psalms chapter 4. Um, read verse. What verse is that? Mm, no, Psalms 4. I'm looking at Psalms 5. Psalms 4 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 4 verse 5. You know what? Start of verse 4. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. Stand in awe and sin not. It says, stand in awe and sin not. Guess what? Stand in awe when you see Israel wake up. You understand? And Israel not sinning. Because guess where we are now? Hold this. Give me that thing, Zephaniah 3, verse 10. Because that's where we are. They dispersed of Israel. You understand? Zephaniah. Chapter 3, 
Because we life, ne? We life. All praises. Because I've been hearing some evil stuff that in South Africa is mainly the Canaanites. What the hell is this that I'm hearing? They don't read the Bible, ne? Israel is not scattered among all nations. Those are clueless Negroes. They don't know the Bible. I'm hearing demonic doctrines on YouTube saying, no, in South Africa is mainly the Canaanites. Where's the proof? Show us them scriptures. Where are the scriptures? Hmm? Read that for me. Zephaniah 3 and 10. Chapter 3 verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. That's in Africa. Huh? And it's not talking about the west coast of Africa. It's not talking about the central coast of Africa. It's not talking about the north. No, no, no. The whole continent Israel is here. Yes, we are living among Hamites, but we always outnumber all nations. What Bible are they not reading? They make me sick. Now read the Bible again. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Read. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Because guess what? The blue Nile, the white Nile flow into the west. And guess what? It also flows to the south. Read. My suppliance. My suppliance. Come on. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Even the daughter of my dispersed. The daughter of my... You, mm, read the Bible again, verse 10. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Read. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Uh -huh. Supplies. Go ahead. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Read. Shall bring my offering. What type of offerings will we bring? The offerings and sacrifices of righteousness. That's what we're doing right now. Read. In that day. No, no. I... Is that it on that? Yes, hey, keep going. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 11. Uh -huh. In that day. Shall thou not be ashamed? We are not going to be ashamed. Israel is here in South Africa. What are they talking about? Read. For all thy doings. We are not going to be ashamed because now we are keeping the laws of God now. Read. We read thou hast transgressed. Because we have transgressed against the Lord. So now the Lord is waking us up. We are not going to be ashamed of that. Okay. Read. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Because the people that rejoice in our pride is the other nations. Read. And thou shalt no more be haughty. We are not going to be haughty anymore. We are no longer going to go against what this Bible is saying. Read. Because of my holy mountain. Because that's Zion. Because we are Zion. Read. I will also live in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people. Are we not poor here on the continent? We are in poverty. The nations are exploiting us of the resources, the minerals that are upon me, upon the land. They kicked us out of our houses. Hmm? They stole everything from us. They're still stealing everything from us. You understand? Because they don't know no history. Because when Israel was scattered in 78 AD, guess what? In the 1600s, in the West Coast, guess what? Yet yeah, the transatlantic slave trade happened. But what about those Israelites that came here even way before that, during the time of Babylon, Assyria? Hmm? The Persian Empire, hmm? the Greeks and the Romans. When the transatlantic slave trade took place, the Israelites that remained here, where they at? What happened to them? We were colonized, you idiots on YouTube. Read the Bible again. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 12. Read. I will also live in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people. And afflicted and poor people. We are afflicted and were poor here in Mzanzi. Read. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. We're going to trust in the name of the Lord. That's why we're waking up now. Read. The remnant of Israel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? The remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. Jacob is over here too. Go ahead. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. They shall not do iniquity. Why? Because the prophets will be raised up to teach the remnant of Jacob on this side of the earth. Read. No speak lies. We're not going to speak lies because we keep God's laws. Read. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Because we're keeping God's commandments. Read. For they shall feed. We're going to feed on the laws of God. Come on. And lie down. Uh -huh. And none shall make them afraid. None going to make us afraid. Even wicked Israelites that know they are Israel, they don't want to teach their nation. Because you cannot look at a brother and say, you are a Hamite. You cannot do that. You cannot just look at a brother and say, that's, that's a Hamite, right? You don't know. 
unless if they tell you, they say, listen, bro, me, I'm not a, I'm not a Shemite. I'm not a Bantu. I'm a Hamite. Okay, we understand, brother. We hear what you say. But you cannot just be talking to a brother or sister on the phone and say, no, uh, the majority of the people in South Africa is the Canaanites. Guess what? And some are mixed. So you may not be Israel. How the hell do you know? How do you know that? Give me that in um, Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 14. The Lord is the one that is going to set the people in order. Not some wicked Negro with some Kung Fu fringes. Now read the Bible. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 14. Read. I shall set the people in order. No, 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 no. Some wicked Negro who thinks he knows better. Read. I shall set the people in order. The most said God says he's the one that is going to set the people in order. Read. And the nations shall be subject unto me. And the nations will be subject unto the Most High. The Lord is the one that's going to do it. Our job is to teach. And when Israel wakes up, they come into this truth. Their spirit bears witness with this Bible. You understand? The Lord is the one that's going to separate them. Not us. That's not our job. Because we are men. We can make mistakes. Read the Bible again, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 14. Read. I shall set the people in order. I shall set the people in order. Go ahead. And the nations shall be subject unto me. And the nations will be subject unto the Most High. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go back to Zephaniah 3, verse 12 again. Verse 13. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13. Read. The remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. That's us. Read. Shall not do iniquity. Uh -huh. So, guess what? The, the suppliants that are beyond the rivers of Ethiopia is Israel. Go ahead. No speak lies. Uh -huh. Neither shall exceed from tongue be found in their mouth. That's what we're reading here. Okay, go ahead. For they shall feed and lie down, uh -huh. and none shall make them afraid. Go ahead. Next verse. Go ahead. See, O daughter of Zion. The remnant of Israel beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Read. Shout, O Israel. Shout, O Israel. Come on. Declare and rejoice with all the heart. With all the heart. Come on. O daughter of Jerusalem. O daughter of Jerusalem. That's what he's saying. That's what we're reading here. That's what we're learning. But it amazes me when I hear Negroes that be saying stuff like that. With Bibles in the head and fringes and a bottle of blue. Talk about no. There's no Israelites in, in South Africa. It's mainly Canaanite. How the hell do you know? Give me that into Tommy 28 verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. No, no. Just, just the continent of Africa except for South Africa. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. No, 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 no. Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, but not to the south. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Among all people. He didn't say the continent of Africa except the southern part of South Africa. No, of Africa. He didn't say that. Read that verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Among all people. Read. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. You said from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Go ahead. And then thou shalt serve other gods. That's why we're serving other gods in these last days. In the lands of our captivity. On the four corners of the earth. Maybe the problem is the mathematics. One, two, three... Four corners of the earth. Hmm? Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Come on. Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Now, give me that in Second Chronicles chapter 8 verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 8 verse 12. Go ahead. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, Read. which he had built before the porch. This is Solomon's porch, so which he had built before the porch. Come on. Even after a certain rate every day, Read. offering according to the commandment of Moses. Offering according to the commandment of Moses. Read. On the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. Come on. And on the new moon. On the new moons. Read. And on the solemn feast. On the solemn feast that you read about in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Come on. Three times in the year. Three times in the year. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 16, 16. Read. Even 
in the feast of unleavened bread even in the feast of unleavened bread come on and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and in the feast of tabernacles okay now give me Nehemiah 13 because remember what I want to show you is that um King Solomon yes they offered right on the on these days the feast of unleavened bread the feast of weeks and the feast of tabernacles give me Nehemiah 8 verse 14 Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 14. Go ahead. And they found written in the law. They found written in the law. Go ahead. Which the Lord had commanded by Moses. Uh, which the Lord had commanded by Moses. Meaning they found, it says they found written in the law. They found. So that means during this time, there are certain things they didn't know how to apply correctly. Because why? We've been through captivity. The Assyrian Empire. The Babylonians. The Persians, you understand? And during the time of Nehemiah, we were in Persia. So you've got Assyria have gone by, you've got the Babylonians have gone by, now we're under the Persian Empire, which is when the Lord allowed us to re go back and rebuild with, Zachar with um, Zerubbabel in them, with Nehemiah in them. Okay? So now, read that again. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 14. So they are building, they are rebuilding now. Okay? Read. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses. So they found written in the law. So there's certain things now that when they begin to open the books. Because what? That means the books was lost. Now they are beginning to find the books. They are beginning to read what's in the law and what they need to do now after the rebuilding. You understand? Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple and Nehemiah rebuilt the walls. Now they are finding in the book that means the books was not with them. Okay, go ahead. That the children of Israel should dwell in booths. That they, they, this is what they found. They found that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. Read. In the feast of the seventh month. In the feast of the seventh month, which is the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. And that they should publish and proclaim it in all their cities. So they must publish what they found in written in the books regarding the feast of tabernacles, that we should dwell in booths. So they say, publish this knowledge that we now have. What we have found because we had lost it. Read. And in Jerusalem, uh -huh. say, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches. Read. And myrtle branches. Read. And palm branches and branches of thick trees. Read. To make boots. Uh -huh. As it is written. We just read it in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. We just read that. Read. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves boots. Uh -huh. Everyone upon the roof of his house. You see that thing? Is that they made themselves boots, everyone upon the roof of his house. Because he's letting you know that the way we build houses was not this modern way we're building houses. We had flat roofs. The roofs was flat. That's why we're able to set up boots on top of the roofs. Okay, go ahead. Everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts. Uh -huh. And in the courts of the house of God. Read. And in the street of the water gate. And in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Because the Ephraim also had to observe this. All twelve. Read on. And all the congregation. All twelve meaning. Meaning. There were those of our forefathers. The remnant of northern kingdom was among us. Because the majority had left. Went to a way never mankind dwelt. Okay. Read. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 17. Go ahead. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made boots. They made boots. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Read verse 17 again. Listen to what it says. Read. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 17. Come on. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity. You see that? Out of the captivity. So in captivity we observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Read on. Out of the captivity made boots uh -huh. and set under the boots. Read. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun. See, because since the day of the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, come on. Since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. He says, We have not done, done the Feast of Tabernacle like this since the days of Joshua. That's letting you know during the time of Solomon, we didn't do it like this. Even. Okay, go ahead. 
And there was very great gladness. There was very great gladness. Come on. Also, day by day, from the first day until the last day, uh -huh. he read in the book of the law of God. You see that every day. Isn't that what we've been doing, brothers? Going over scripture since we got here. Oh, praise you. Let's give the Lord a hand for that oh, thing. Praise oh, praises to the Most High God. Give the Lord a hand, brothers, sisters, and the children. Oh, praises to the Most High. Read verse 18 again. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 18. Right. Also, day by day, from the first day until the last day, uh -huh. he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. They kept the feast seven days, read. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. The solemn assembly that's going into what? The, the, it's a what? It's a Sabbath. Okay? It is a Sabbath. Now, let's see. During the time of Christ, did our forefather observe that? Yes, they did. Matthew 4, 17. Matthew 4, 17. Read that. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Now, this is Christ's first ministry now. He begins to teach. Go ahead. And to say, uh -huh. repent. Do what? Repent. Read. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, Christ began to teach. What did he say? Read that verse again, verse 17. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Go ahead. From that time, Jesus began to preach. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Began to preach. Where did he begin to preach? Hold that. Give me Luke 24. Luke 24 verse 25. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Okay. Luke 24. Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Read. Right. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Oh, see that? Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Come on. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things uh -huh. and to enter into his glory? And to enter into his glory. John 7, 39. We're coming back. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? How did he suffer? He was crucified. He was tortured, crucified, and left hanging on the cross for six hours. Read that. John 7, 39. John chapter 7, verse 39. Go ahead. But this spake he of the Spirit, uh -huh. which they that believe on him should receive. They that believe on Christ will receive the Spirit. They will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Read. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, uh -huh. because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You see that? The Holy Ghost was not given yet, because Christ was not yet glorified. He was not yet come into his glory. Okay? So go back. Luke 24, verse 26 again. Luke chapter 24, verse 26. Pray. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things uh -huh. and to enter into his glory? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Okay, go ahead. And beginning at Moses. Whoa, whoa, stop right there. When he began to teach, where did he begin at? And beginning at Moses. You see that? That's what we read in Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach. And to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You cannot teach repentance that the kingdom of heaven is at hand without going into the laws that are written in the first five books and in the prophets. You cannot teach the kingdom of heaven without that. Read that again. Luke chapter 24 verse 27. Read. And beginning at Moses. And beginning at Moses. Go ahead. And all the prophets. No, some of the prophets. And all the prophets. And all the prophets. Come on. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. In all the scriptures out of the law and out of all the prophets. Read. The things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. So guess what? During when Christ taught, he began at Moses and in the prophets. You understand? So guess what? So you think he did not teach the Feast of Tabernacles? Of course he did. Did he not observe it? Yes, he did. You understand? Now, give me that in um, Matthew. Chapter Luke 24, 44. Let's just read that. Luke 24, verse 44. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Go ahead. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. Uh -huh. While I was yet with you. While I was yet with you. While I was still with you, come on. That all things must be fulfilled. All things must be fulfilled, right? Which were written in the law of Moses. Which were written in the law of Moses. 
and in the prophets. And in all the prophets like we just read, go ahead. And in the service uh -huh. concerning me. Concerning himself. Now, Matthew 5, 17. So Christ always taught out of the law and out of the prophets. So it amazes me when you look in the Christian church, they say the Old Testament is done away with. That means they are saying Christ is done away with. That's what they are saying. Now read that. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 17. Verse 17. God, somebody might say, but he didn't say that. Give me that in Psalms 40. Verse 7. Psalms 40 verse 7. Let's read that. Psalms 40 verse 7. Go ahead. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. I come in the volume of the book. Go ahead. It is written of me. It is written of me. So Christ is letting you know he comes in the volume of the book. You understand? From the beginning to end, he comes in his Christ. The whole Bible is about him. Understand that? Now, give me Matthew 5, 17. Because Christ didn't come to abolish the laws and the commandments that are written in the Bible. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. He's, he says, don't think I, the reason why I came is to destroy the laws that are written. Go ahead. Or the prophets. Or what's written in the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The things that are written concerning him. Read. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. till heaven and earth pass, Come on. one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law. Read. Till all be fulfilled. You see that thing? So guess what? We still must keep the laws. Case in point, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now give me John 7 and 1. John chapter 7 verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Uh -huh. For he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Because the Jews sought to kill him. This man is performing miracles. He's healing the people. But his own citizens, they wanted to kill him. They did eventually. Healing the people. But you want to put that man to death. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read verse 2 again. John chapter 7 verse 2. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand, like now. The feast of tabernacle is at hand right now. You understand? Go ahead. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that my disciples also may that, see. That, that thy disciples. That thy disciples also may see. The works that thou doest. You see that thing? That your disciples also may see the works that you are doing, Christ. Okay? But Christ was what? There was a, during the time of Christ, they observed the Feast of Tabernacles. Did he observe it also? Let's keep reading. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. No man doeth anything in secret. Come on. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. He says, don't do things in secret, but you seek to be known openly. He says, these miracles that you're performing, let your disciples know what you're doing also. Go ahead. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. He says, if you're doing these things, show yourself to the world. Go ahead. For neither did his brethren believe in him. You see, his own brothers that grew up with him in the house, they didn't believe in him. Why? Get that in Matthew chapter 13. Let's see why. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 57. Let's start with 55, so we understand. The same brethren that we read about, his brothers, we're going to read about them now. Verse 55, read. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Come on. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the carpenter's son? Read. Is not his mother called Mary? So what are they asking? Is not this the son of Joseph, the carpenter that we know? They didn't say, is not this Gabriel's son, the angel? They didn't say that. Because Christ was born just like you and me through sexual intercourse. Go ahead. It's not his mother called Mary. Uh -huh. And his brethren. And his brethren. James. Uh -huh. And Joseph. Uh -huh. And Simon. And Judas. So these are all his brothers. How were they born? Go ahead. Shazam, I suppose. Go ahead. And his sisters. And he, oh, he had sisters also. Plural. He had more than one. Go ahead. Are they not all with us? Are they not all with us? Read. Whence then 
had this man all these things. Uh -huh. Heavy stuff. Go ahead. And they were offended in him. They were offended. His own brothers and sisters that grew up in the house, they were offended. Go ahead. But Jesus said unto them. This is what he said unto them. Go ahead. A prophet is not without honor. Stop right there. He says a prophet is not without honor. He's saying a prophet does have honor. That's what he's saying. Read. Safe in his own country. He says except in his own country that he grew up, that they know him. Read. And in his own house. And his own house of the brothers and sisters that grew up with him. He's not going to have honor there. But he does have honor to the people that don't know him that he's teaching the gospel of, you understand, healing the people. He does have honor. Okay? Read. And he did not he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So he could not do mighty works among them because they did not believe. You understand? But eventually some of them did. Now go back to John 7. John 7. Um, read verse 5 again. John chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Neither did his brethren believe in him. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. My time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. Go ahead. But your time is always ready. But your time is always ready. Come on. The world cannot hate you. Uh -huh. But me it hated. Mm. Because I testify of it. Because he testified against the world. What? The world, was, the world is evil. During his time and during this time now, the world is even worse than it was back then. Okay, go ahead. That the works thereof are evil. Because the works that are done in the world, they are evil. Read. Go ye up unto this feast. Go ye up unto this feast. What feast is this? Jump up to verse 2 again so we know what the feast is. John chapter 7 verse 2. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. That's the feast he's talking about. He says, now go there up to this feast. What feast? The feast of tabernacles. Read that verse again. Jump down again. John chapter 7 verse 8. Read. Go ye up unto this feast. He says, go ye up. He's telling his brethren, go ye up to this feast. Which feast? The feast of tabernacles. Read. I go not up yet unto he, this feast. He says, I'm not going to come yet to the feast. Read. For my time is not yet full. For my time is not yet full. Read. When he had said these words unto them. When he said these words unto them. Come on. He abode still in Galilee. He still was still in Galilee. But watch this. Read on. But when his brethren were gone up. Then went he also up unto the feast. Read verse 10 again. What did he do? John chapter 7 verse 10. Read. But when his brethren were gone up. But when his brethren were gone up. What did Christ say? Then went he also. Then went he also. Meaning he also observed what? Come on. Up unto the feast. He went to observe the feast of tabernacles. So Christ observed the feast of tabernacles. He kept the, that commandment. You understand? For seven days. Read. Not openly. But as it were in secret. Uh-huh. Um, give me now. Give me Baruch 4. Go back. Let's go back to Baruch now. Because during the time of Christ, they observed the Feast of Tabernacles. So guess what? Likewise, today we do the same thing. Okay? Baruch 4 verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. This is the book of the commandments of God. The book of the commandments of God. Read. And the law that endureth forever. And the law that endureth forever. Read that again. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Read. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep the laws of God will come to life. Come on. But such as leave it shall die. But such as stop keeping the laws of God, they gonna die. Read. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Read that again. Read that again, verse 2. Baruch the 4 verse 2. Uh-huh. Turn thee, O Jacob. He says, Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn to what? Read. And take hold of it. Take hold of it. The it is the book of the commandments of the Lord in verse 1. Go ahead. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. What is the light? Get that in Proverbs 6, 23. Let's see what is the light that we must walk in the presence of. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. 
Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamb. The commandment is a lamb. Read. And the law is light. The law is what? And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Go back. Baruch 4, verse 1, verse 2 again. Baruch chapter 4, verse 2. Come on. Turn thee, O Jacob, uh -huh. and take hold of it. Take hold of the book of the commandment of the law. Read. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Walk in the presence of the commandment thereof. Read. That thou mayest be illuminated. That we may be enlightened of the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that is written in this book. To know when and how to observe the Feast of Tabernacles as an example. Okay? Now, give me that in uh, Revelation 3 verse 18. Let's understand. It says that thou may be illuminated. What does that mean? Read that. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. Go ahead. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. The gold tried in the fire is our Lord and Savior. Is this Bible. Go ahead. That thou mayest be rich. That we may be rich in good works. Go ahead. And white raiment. White raiment which is the righteousness of the saints. Read. That thou mayest be clothed. Uh -huh. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. The shame of our nakedness do not appear. Can you turn me up a little bit? That the shame of, just a little bit. That the shame of our nakedness does not appear. Because the laws of God covers our nakedness which is what? Our sins. So when we observe the laws of God, guess what? It covers our nakedness. Read. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve. Eye salve. Eye salve is a cleaning solution for the eyes. Go ahead. That thou may see. That thou may see. Go ahead. As many as I love. That's it right there. That's it on that. You understand? It says, anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou may see. The laws of God is what's going to give us what? That illumination. That understanding. Okay? Ephesians 1 verse 18. Let's get there. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Read. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being illuminated. That's what we read in Baruch. What illuminates our eyes of understanding? The laws of God. The spirit of Christ upon us. Read. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. We Now we know the hope of, our, of, our call, of his calling. Okay, come on. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We are the saints, according to Psalms 148 verse 14. Now, go back, Baruch chapter 4 verse 2 again. Baruch chapter 4 verse 2. Read. Tend thee, O Jacob, uh -huh. and take hold of it. Read. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. That you may be illuminated. Give me second Isaiah chapter 7 verse 60. He says, we must walk in the presence of the light thereof, that we may be illuminated. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 60. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 60. Read. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him, nor, nor me, which have spoken unto them. Read verse 59, we're going to read down. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 59. Go ahead. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people when he lived. Uh -huh. The life is the commandments that he gave unto us. Read. Say, choose thee life. You must choose life, come on. That thou mayest live. That we may live. Read. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. They believe not him. Because our people have no faith. Okay, come on. Nor yet the prophets after him. Nor yet the prophets that came after Moses. Joshua, Nehemiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Nahum. Read. No, no, me. No, no, me. They did not, they don't know the Lord. Go ahead. Which have spoken unto them. Uh -huh. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction. There should not be such heaviness in their destruction. Come on. As shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. So the joy, the people that are going to have joy is those that are persuaded to salvation. The reason why we're here, we observing the Feast of Tabernacle, is because we are persuaded to salvation. That's why we're here. Because we are persuaded to salvation. We believe and know that if we keep God's laws, we are going to get delivered. Watch this. Give me Second Ezra chapter 9. This is how we are persuaded to salvation. 
Second Ezra 9, read verse 6. Second Ezra 9, verse 6. Go ahead. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings uh -huh. in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. Because guess what? The way how the world started is as what? It began in wonders and powerful works. You understand? Those miracles that our forefathers saw. But it says ending in effects and signs. What are those effects and signs? The curses upon us. You understand? Read who we are. The same people that we witness how the world started with wonders and powerful signs. Go ahead. And everyone that shall be saved. And everyone that shall be saved because they are persuaded to salvation. Read. And shall be able to escape by his works. Shall be able to escape by his what? By his works. By his works. So you cannot get the kingdom of heaven, but you are not obeying the laws of God. You are still celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day. You still go to church on Sunday, you worship the white Jesus. You will not get delivered. When the Christ cracked the sky, he comes to deliver the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. You're not going to know what he looks like because you refuse to know him in the scriptures as a black man with woolly hair and skin so dark like he burned in a furnace. Read again. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 7. Read. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. Shall be able to escape by his works. So salvation, you'll only get salvation when you have works. You keep the commandments. Read. And by faith. And by faith. The faith in Christ. So it's not faith only. Yes, you must have faith in Christ. But the biblical Christ. Not the white man that they are painting, they are showing us on TV. Because I know what the Christian church think. They say, no, it doesn't matter what Jesus looked like. That's a lie. Jesus is a black man, and he died for us, and it's written in the Bible. So if you don't believe that Christ is a black man, you will not get the kingdom. If you refuse to, to acknowledge that he is a black man and he died for us, you will not receive the kingdom. You're going to die when the Lord returns. Read the Bible again. Read. And everyone that shall be saved. Uh-huh. And shall be able to escape by his works. And shall be able to escape by his works. Go ahead. And by faith. Read. Whereby ye have believed. So his works is faith and belief in the Lord. That he is a black man that died for his people. Okay. So go back to 2nd Ezra 7. Verse 61 again. 2nd Ezra 7 verse 61. Read. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction. Uh-huh. As shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. It says, what? We are persuaded to salvation. So when we keep the laws of God, we observe the Feast of Tabernacles, it's proof that we are persuaded to salvation. Because we believe what the Bible is saying as it is written. We don't believe as they tell, tell us, no, we believe the way it's written. And we do as it is written. Okay? Give me, go back, Baruch, chapter 4. Baruch, chapter, chapter 4, verse 2 again. Baruch, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Uh -huh. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. That you may be illuminated, enlightened. Go ahead. Give not thine honor to another. Don't give your honor to another nation. Go ahead. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee. To a strange nation. That's why this Bible is not for the other nations. It's only for us, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. O Israel, happy are we. Uh -huh. For things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. Read verse 4 again. Baruch chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. O Israel, happy are we. O Israel, happy are we. Because we are happy. Read. For things that are pleasing to God. Because the things that are pleasing to God. Come on are made known unto us what is pleasing to god give me that in isaiah 42 22. let us see what is pleasing to god is pleasing to god eating pork is pleasing to god going to church on sunday that does not please the lord the most High never commanded us to go to church on the first day of the week he gave us the sabbath day as it is written read that isaiah 42 verse 22 come on no verse 21 isaiah 42 verse 21 Isaiah chapter 42 verse 21. Come on. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. 
So the things that are pleasing to God is when we do his righteousness. So let's get there. Deuteronomy 6.25. The things that are pleasing to God, they are made known unto us. What is pleasing unto God is doing his righteousness. What is his righteousness? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. So righteousness is when we keep the laws of God. So go back to Isaiah 42, verse 21 again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Read. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. The Lord is pleased for his righteousness sake. When we keep the laws of God, the Lord is well pleased by that thing. Go ahead. He will magnify the law. He will magnify the law because when Christ walked the earth, he magnified the laws of God. So guess what? After the, the walkings and the footsteps of the Messiah, we also must magnify the law. Read. Right? And make it honorable. Now that's what we do because he did. We doing it also. Okay? So go back. Baruch chapter 4, verse 4 again. Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. Read. O Israel, happy are we. Uh -huh. For things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. So the things that are pleasing to God, they are made known unto us. Which is what? The commandments. The laws of God are made known unto us. As knowing the laws of God and obeying the laws of God, that's pleasing to the Mosa. The law says he's pleased with that. You understand? So the reason why we're celebrating this glorious day is because the Lord delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh out of the land of Egypt. First Ezra, okay? Now jump down to verse 21. Baruch. You know what? Mm, read verse 5. Baruch 4 verse 5. Baruch 4 verse 5. Come on. Be of good cheer, my people. Be of good cheer, all oh my people. Come on. The memorial of Israel. We are the memorial of Israel. Jump down to verse 21 now. Watch this. Verse 21. Uh -huh. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, O Israel. Come on. O my children. O the children of Israel, of Jacob. Read. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemy. You see that thing? We must cry unto the Lord, because the Lord will deliver us from the power and the hand of our enemies. The same way he did it back then, from the hand of Pharaoh, you will do it today under the white man, the European nations, Babylon the Great. The same thing. Watch this. First Ezra 1 verse 7. First Ezra chapter 1 verse 7. First Ezra chapter 1 verse 7. Because the Feast of Tabernacles is the remem remembrance what the Lord did for us. He delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and we dwell in booths in the wilderness is to remember what that great thing that the Lord did for us. Read. First Ezra chapter 1 verse 7. No, 2 Ezra 1 verse 7. 2 Ezra chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Ezra chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. Am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt? The Lord is the one that brought us out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. From the house of bondage? From the house of slavery. The Lord delivered us from the house of slavery. Go ahead. But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsel. That's why we ended up in captivity. Okay? Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Many kings have I destroyed for their sake. So the Lord destroyed many kings for our sakes. Read. Pharaoh with his servants. Pharaoh is one of those kings that he destroyed for our sakes. Read on. And all his power have I smitten down. Because the Lord destroyed Egypt with plagues. You understand? Now... We are in New Egypt now, okay? Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 11. We are no longer in that physical Egypt that we're in. Now we are in New Egypt. Guess what? We are celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Watch this. Second Ezra 15, verse 11. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 11. Go ahead. But I will bring them with a mighty hand. But I will bring Israel with a mighty hand. Read verse 10 so we understand. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 10. Come on. Behold, my people is led as flock to the slaughter. You see that? My people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Go ahead. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. He says, I'm not going to allow them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Which Egypt is he talking about here? Keep going. But I will bring them with a mighty hand uh -huh. and a stretched out arm. Out of the land of Egypt, read. And smite Egypt 
with plagues. And he's going to smite Egypt with plagues. Come on. As before. As what? As before. As before. This is letting you know. We're not longer in ancient Egypt. We're in new Egypt. Spiritual Egypt. And the Lord will do the same thing for us that he did back then. And on this time, it's going to be more glorious. Read. And will destroy all the land thereof. And I will destroy all the land of Egypt thereof. Which Egypt is this? Spiritual Egypt. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. This is what the Lord will do for us. I'm trying to show you now. We are stepping into a new time frame. We are no longer back then. We are here now. Yes, we, get, we came out of Egypt. We dwell in boots. Now we are in new Egypt. Guess what? We are dwelling in boots. As preparation for our deliverance. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Their dead bodies, meaning spiritually dead bodies. Hold this. Proverbs 21 16. Their dead bodies, okay, is they shall lie in the street of the great city. Because we're not physically dead, but we're spiritually dead. Okay? Read. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Come on. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. So guess what? Now as a nation, we are wandering out of the way of understanding. Where are we wandering to? The Christian church. Being taught lies and taught demonic doctrines. Read. Shall remain in the congregation of the day. That's why now our people, they are in the congregation of the day. The Christian church is the congregation of the day. Politics, the congregation of the day. Democracy, the congregation of the day. So go back. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So their spiritually dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What is the greatest city on earth? Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 18. The greatest city on earth. Revelation chapter 18. Read verse 10. Revelation chapter 18 verse 10. Go ahead. Standing afar off for the fear of a torment. Uh -huh. Say, alas, alas, that great city Babylon. That great city Babylon. That's Babylon the great. The United States of America. That's Babylon the great. That's that great city. Read. That mighty city. That mighty city. There's no city that is mightier than the United States. That's the mightiest city on earth. The richest one, by the way. Go ahead. For in one hour, for in one hour, come on, is the judgment come. That's why it says, I'm going to smite Egypt as with plagues as before. And it's going to take the Lord one hour to destroy what they built. Okay, now go back. Revelation 11 verse 8. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Come on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. This great city, that's Babylon the great, go ahead. Which spiritually. Which what? Which spiritually. Which spiritually. This is not physically, spiritually, go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Is called Sodom. So America is spiritual Sodom. And they are pushing the Sodom agenda throughout the whole earth. You understand? Go ahead. And Egypt. And spiritually is called Egypt. Because in Egypt, what were we in Egypt? We were slaves in Egypt. So likewise today, we are slaves in spiritual Egypt. Okay, go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Our Lord was crucified in spiritual Egypt. You understand? His teachings was crucified. His image was crucified from the time of the 1400s unto this day. That's why we are te they are teaching us why Jesus. You see him in the movies. You see him in the news. You understand? Everybody believes that Jesus is a white man. That's a lie. Why? Because America is pushing that Sodom agenda. Is pushing that what? Is pushing those demonic doctrines through the banner of Christianity. The brainchild of the Roman Catholic crack. Understand that? So guess what? The Lord says he will deliver us out of this, this day. We are going to get delivered. Now watch this. Give me now, um, go back to Baruch. No, go back to 2nd Ezra. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Read verse 11 again. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 11. Read. But I will bring them with a mighty hand uh -huh. and a stretched out arm. Go ahead. And smite each plates as before. As before, meaning as in the past, the Lord will do it now in these last days. Go ahead. 
and will destroy all the land thereof. And he's going to destroy all the land thereof, meaning it's going to be wiped out in one hour. You understand? The nations are not going to, is not, they're not going to be able to finish America. That's why Christ has to show up on the scene. Big brother, with bombs, with angels, with chariots, to wipe it up, to wipe it out in one hour. Okay? Now, keep going. Read. Egypt shall mourn. Egypt, uh, Egypt, the spiritual Egypt shall mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague. It's going to be smitten with the plagues that are going to come with the plague. That's why now you see there's all manner of disease, biologically, biologically engineered diseases in the labs now. Your COVID, your, your, your monkeypox. These are all man-made. Okay, go ahead. And punishment that God shall bring upon it. And punishment that the Most High God will bring upon spiritual Egypt, the great city Babylon. Read. They that till the ground shall mourn. They that till the ground shall mourn because there's going to be famine. Read. For their seeds shall fade through the blasting and hate. Because the Lord will bring hell upon this earth. Read. And with a fearful constellation. Missiles. World War Three. That's how it's going to be destroyed, this spiritual Egypt. Because guess what? They are ruling the earth with all manner of evil, oppression, and demonic activity. That's how they do it. Okay? Now, read verse um, Baruch 4.21. Watch this. Go back to Baruch 4 verse 21 again. Baruch 4 verse 21. Read. Be of good cheer, O my children. Go be of good cheer, O my children. Meaning you Israelites. Read. Cry unto the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. And he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. The same way he delivered us from the power, you understand, and the hand of our enemies, the pharaohs. Guess what? He's going to he's gonna what? deliver us the same way again in these last days. But keep going. Read. For my hope is in the everlasting. The everlasting. Go ahead. That he will save you. He will save you because what? Those that are going to be saved is those that have works, have faith, and believe in the Lord. Okay? He says, he will save you because we are persuaded to salvation. How? Because we're observing the laws of God. We are re rehearsing the righteous acts. We're showing the love. We're showing the most high God that we have faith in him. Read. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One. Uh -huh. Because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you uh -huh. from the everlasting. From the everlasting, come on. Our Savior. Our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Read. For I sent you out with mourning uh -huh. and weeping. I sent you out with mourning and weeping. Jump up to verse 6. What is he talking about? He says he sent us out of our homeland with mourning and weeping. Read. Baruch chapter 4 verse 6. Come on. You were sold to the nations. We were sold, we were sold to the nations. Come on. In slavery. Captivity. Read. Not for your destruction. Not for us to be destroyed, but to learn our lessons and repent. Read. But because he moved God to rest. We angered the Most High God. We made him angry. Go ahead. When we broke his laws. He were delivered unto the enemies. We were deli we got delivered to the hands of our enemies. The sub-Saharan slave trade. The transatlantic slave trade. Colonization. You understand? Uh, the Silk Road slave trade. Apartheid. All of that. Go ahead. That's it on that. Go back. 4 verse 23 again. The root of the 4 verse 23. Read. For I sent you out with mourning uh -huh. and weeping. Read. But God will give you to me again. The Lord will give, will return us back. Read. With joy and gladness forever. Because we will be in the kingdom. Read. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. The neighbors of Zion is the other nations. They've seen our captivity because they're the ones enslaving us. Read. So shall they see shortly your salvation from our God. They shall shortly, shortly see the salvation from our God because Christ will come and deliver us. Read. Which shall come upon you with great glory uh -huh. and brightness of the everlasting. You see that thing? And brightness of the everlasting. The Lord is going to deliver us. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Matthew. 24 verse 29. Read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. The tribulation of those days is what we read in Baruch 4 verse 6. Read Baruch 4 verse 6 again. 
Ruth, the four of the six. Right. You were sold to the nation, uh -huh. not for your destruction. Go ahead. But because you ye moved God to rest, uh -huh. you were delivered unto the enemy. We got delivered to our enemies. That's the tribulation, slavery, captivity. Okay. Go back to where was that? Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Come on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. So when we get delivered, you understand, after the tribulation of those days, slavery, captivity, okay, says the sun shall be what? The sun shall be darkened. Meaning world war. Right? And the moon shall not give a light. Because there's going to be nuclear war on this earth. It's coming. They call it the day of, uh, the, the day of Armageddon. The doomsday. The day of doom. Right? And the stars shall fall from heaven. The stars that shall fall from heaven is their satellites that they are using to spy on us. Right? And to spy what's coming up there. Was coming out there. Read. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. These kingdoms are going to be shaken when the Lord makes his second coming. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Because Christ is going to crack the sky. Read. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the twelve tribes of Israel will mourn because we see the day of our deliverance. Read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. In the clouds of heaven. In the clouds of heaven with chariots and millions of angels. Read. With power. With power. And great glory. And great glory. Give me that in Isaiah 47 verse 1. With power and great glory. When the Lord returns. Okay. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 3. Watch this. Start of verse 1. We're going to read down. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 1. Come on. Come down and sit in the dust. Oh, virgin daughter of Babylon. The virgin daughter of Babylon, what is it talking about? It's talking about who? America. Read. Sit on the ground. Uh -huh. There is no throne. Oh, daughter of the Chaldees. Oh, daughter of the Chaldees, because they are what? They are the daughter of Babylon, of ancient Babylon. Read. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Because guess what? He's no, she's not going to be the most favorite whore anymore. Because now she's the world favored harlot. America, she's in bed with all nations. She's the world favored whore. Read. Take the millstone uh -huh. and grind meal. Come on. And cover thy locks. Read. Make bare the leg. Because now we're going to bring them to shame. The Lord will bring them to shame. We're doing now spiritually. The Lord will do it physically. Go ahead. Uncover the thigh. Uh -huh. Pass over the river. Read. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, meaning your sins will be revealed. Or America is the devil the Bible speaks of. Read. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Uh huh. I will take vengeance. The Lord says he's going to take vengeance upon America. Go ahead. And I will not meet thee as a man. And he's not going to, he says, I'm going to meet you as a man. I'm going to meet you as something else. With spiritual powers now. Okay. Matthew 24. I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 30 again. Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. Read. And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the tribes of the earth will mourn. Come on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven uh -huh. with power and great glory. Because he's not going to meet him as a man. Read. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet. With the great sound of a trumpet. Come on. And they shall gather together. His elect. His elect, the remnant of Israel on this side of the earth also. Go ahead. From the four winds. From the four winds, the four corners of the earth where we are scattered as slaves. Read. From one end of heaven to the other. Even unto the other. All praises to the Most High God. Let's give the Lord a hand for that thing. All praises. All praises to the Most High. All praises. All right. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the Most High.